So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, it's a, it's an honor to uh, be moderating a panel with such esteemed panelists, and and I welcome you all on this very uh, strategic topic, uh, especially in the current environment of you know uh, the pandemic. Though you know globe is witnessing, uh, it is it is such a critical topic to be uh, you know deliberated on. Uh, especially with uh, india ua being the topic of theme today uh, we've had uh, we've had a lot of discussion around indian pharmaceutical businesses looking to sort of you know enhance its footprints across the globe and also uh, you know look at augmenting relationship into this region uh, middle east is a big area of focus for indian pharma companies as well as med devices companies so so i cannot emphasize enough on the importance of this topic uh, uh, without uh, further ado i would like to invite dr aman puri uh, to share his perspective on this collaborative uh, theme for today across pharma as well as med devices and then we can you know initiate uh, into the discussion further so over to you dr aman puri Thank you so much, Ms. Smriti. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Namaskar, salam alaikum. It is indeed a pleasure uh, to join this August gathering uh, while we continue the discussions on the UAE-India Healthcare Conference 2020 in the pharma and med devices segment. Pharma and med devices are a critical component of the UAE-India healthcare collaboration. Of course, all of you would agree and appreciate that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought healthcare to the forefront. And today, in fact, the entire economy is being held hostage by this healthcare crisis. We all understand and appreciate the need both for UAE and India to provide accessible, affordable healthcare to all their citizens and residents. In doing so, I believe the collaboration and partnership between the two countries can play a major role. India also sees its partnership and collaboration with UAE as a building block of our larger collaboration with this region. I am very pleased that we are joined uh, on this panel with uh, His Excellency Marwan Abdul Aziz Janahi, the Managing Director for the Dubai Science Park. We have uh, Dr. Uday Bhaskar, the Director General for PharmExcel amongst other distinguished speakers from the private sector. And what I'm looking forward is to look at ideas on how we can take this collaboration and partnership to the next level. Only two quick points I would like to make from my side, uh, based on my learning till now, is that one clear area of synergy and complementarity is UAE investment into the pharma and the med devices sector in India. And the second clear thing is, as UAE is inviting pharmaceutical producers from different parts of the globe to improve their footprint into the UAE, not only to service the UAE market, but also servicing this larger region, the MENA region. Uh, as you know, Dubai is a hub uh, for trade with the MENA region for the rest of the world. So with these words, I would like to thank everyone for joining on this panel and look forward to a very fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Puri. I think uh, that sets the context absolutely uh, spot on in terms of what should be the focus for next hour or so we are uh, looking to deliberate on. And in terms of the participants, I think we couldn't have sort of wished for a better or, you know, participants um, from various segments of industries as well as regulators and uh, people who, who sort of, you know, bring in wealth of experience across MENA region and also uh, North uh, Africa, which is, a, which is a big market to be looked at from the MENA region. So I would like to call upon uh, His Excellency uh, Marwan Janahi uh, to, to share his perspective and thoughts. So over to you, Marwan Janahi. Uh, thank you very much uh, again for for uh, Dr. Aman Puri uh, for your invitation. Um, it was uh, a, a no-brainer for us to uh, you know, jump on this opportunity and really uh, discuss uh, discuss the various opportunities uh, with the Indian companies. At uh, at Dubai Science Park, we have more than fifteen companies uh, in the um, from from India that uh, range in the sectors of pharma, med medical device, and also consumer health. Um, and I think uh, you know Dubai being a, a hub for the entire region. 
uh, it has uh, really put itself in a position to uh, to be able to attract a, a lot of companies. Um, but for now, I, I just want to say that um, what our role is and what Dubai Science Park is focusing on, uh, you know, we have been uh, in existence uh, for more than 15 years now, and uh, our approach has always been to provide the uh, the science sector, the 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 um, not only the infrastructure they need, but also the services that they need to establish, and and that includes uh, you know infrastructure that is for manufacturing. Uh, laboratories for R and D, um, offices for regional uh, headquarters, for example, but and everything in between, uh, you know, sp space for entrepreneurs, etc. And and with that, we have been able to attract more hundred than more than three hundred and fifty companies to to uh, to our park. So so that just you know um, puts us in a position where we have become a community of companies, not only uh, a location or an address, but uh, you know. A, have been a community that can connect companies together. Um, we have uh, discussions with the regulators when it comes to uh, rules and regulations that are favorable to the sector, and also work very closely with the universities to make sure that the the right talent and the required talent is being uh, fostered uh, in the universities. So our role is a is a let's say uh, you know enabling the sector, fostering the sector, working with the sector. And if you look at it when it comes to pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, India, in my previous visits, I was always astonished to see the number of factories that are FDA approved. Uh, and really, you know, India is the pharmacy of the world. Uh, but if you look at um, the, the consumption of pharmaceuticals in the region, in GCC, in MENA region, that does not represent the case. It could be the same in Europe and the US where a lot of the Indian companies have a very big share, but it's not the case in the, in the GCC. And uh, it's been one of my main goals to make sure that we create that bridge between India and the UAE to make sure that they have a larger share of the market. Well, that's a really, really useful uh, summary, uh, His Excellency um, Smarban Janahi. Um, I think, I think, really thank you for that perspective. Uh, I would like to invite now uh, Shakshi Goel from Invest India to share her perspective on the sector. Uh, so, Shakshi, over to you. Thank you so much. Kriti. I'm just going to share my screen here. I hope the screen is visible to everyone. Um, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me here today. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be presenting about the opportunities which the pharmaceutical sector in India offers to the globe. Um, you know, as His Excellency clearly stated right now, um, India is actually known as the pharmacy of the world. So, uh, you know, it's not just that we are able to cater to the uh, requirements of India, but we cater to the requirements of the entire globe currently with our production. So if I talk about the low cost generics, vaccines, and even the HIV medicines, which are offered uh, globally, we are the largest producers. Even in terms of the FDA approved plants outside of the US, we stand at the second rank currently. In terms of volume, we are the third largest manufacturers of uh, pharmaceutical medicines. And if I move towards, say, the value, we're actually the 14th largest right now. So, um, you know, in terms of exports, it's actually the top 25 destinations get covered by the industry uh, which is present in India. And um, in terms of uh, the market size, um, approximately $41.1 billion is the current market size of the pharmaceuticals market in India. Even in, in investments, we've seen a huge and growing investment 
from players across the world. In the last 20 years itself, approximately $16.5 billion of FDI has already been received by this industry from the top, uh, from countries such as US, France, Japan, Spain, Germany. Just, these are just few of the companies, uh, countries which I'm talking about. Um, if I move on to the trade, um, so you know, it, uh, it is the largest uh, trade surplus generating industry uh, in the country right now. And um, the uh, market size, I, we, were, uh, we are currently at 41.1 billion, but by uh, the next 30 years, it's going to be approximately $130 billion size of the industry, which is expected. I'd just like to uh, touch base here about the various export trends uh, which this industri uh, industry offers right now. So, um, you know, almost 50% of the revenues for this industry is earned by the exports itself. So if you can see already from 2017 to 2020, the annual growth has been uh, more than 7% already. And over the next uh, three years, uh, it is estimated to be a 12% growth year on year. Um, I've already covered that, you know, uh, we are the largest uh, provider of generic medicines in the world. So if I talk about numbers, it's approximately 20% of the global generic demand is catered to by uh, the Indian industry. Um, just moving on, uh, if I look at the different segments, so of course the formulations in the biologicals do uh, form a largest chunk of uh, the segments which are pro uh, produced and exported, but that doesn't leave apart the other areas such as surgicals, uh, the bulk drugs or the active pharmaceutical ingredients. And even the Ayush and the herbal uh, and other Ayurvedic medicines are also exported uh, to various countries all over the world. Um, just as, as an interesting fact, yes, US is the largest importer, but that doesn't leave behind the other countries which are importing currently from India. Um, I'd like uh, now like to take a moment to just cover the various subsegments uh, under which the Indian pharmaceutical industry is divided into. Um, the first and the foremost being the active pharmaceutical ingredients or the bulk drugs. Um, currently in India, I guess there are 500 plus different APIs which are being manufactured. Uh, just this segment it, uh, uh, adds up to almost uh, 18.8 billion dollar of the industry. So yes, if globally I talk about, we are the third largest market uh, globally um, and in the global marketing percentage terms, approximately 8% of the production gets covered by the Indian market itself. The other uh, big segment being the vaccines market, um, you know, annually India does supply uh, more than a billion vaccines to uh, various countries. So that means 60% of the global demand coverage, specifically um, in antiretroviral vaccines, do get covered by the Indian manufacturers. So um, that leads to approximately a 410 million of exports, um, which are done only from the vaccine segment. Uh, CRAMS uh, uh, is basically the contract research and manufacturing uh, so, uh, uh, companies which are there in India. That's another big segment, and this is a segment which is still growing uh, in India currently uh, with a $9 billion uh, market size uh, till like in the next five years. Um, I can say there are 500 plus just the contract research labs, and I think there are another 500, 600 just the contract manufacturing companies which are presently in India. And these contract research manufacturers are not only utilized by the domestic industry, but globally many players, uh, many top players do make use of these contract research and the manufacturing organizations in India. And that's also because uh, a lot of the cost uh, or the cost factor in India is considerably low as compared to uh, other countries such as US or countries in the Europe. Um, another big segment which I briefly have touched before is the generic segment. Um, yes, uh, a lot of the generics are manufactured in India, 20% of the global volume is catered to by India. So I wouldn't want to talk a lot about this one uh, currently. Um, the last and foremost being the ODC drugs or the formulations which are manufactured from India. Um, in, if I talk about the next five years, um, it's expected to grow annually at a 9.2%, which itself for a segment is a big number. Um, in terms of demand uh, for these OTC drugs, we are seeing a, grow, a growing number coming for this segment specifically in India. 
Um, just uh, also want to briefly talk about the various policies and the support which the government of India offers for the pharmaceutical industry. And it's not only for the industries uh, which are currently present here, um, even the com uh, companies which are looking to come and uh, start their operations here. So the first and foremost being the FDI policy. For a greenfield investment, it's 100% FDI back to throw through an automatic route, um, which is one of the most liberal policies if I talk about globally. Uh, and at the same time, for a brownfield investment, um, it's 74% FDI just through automatic route. And above that, of course, um, it's a government approval, but that still uh, makes it 100% for the sector um, at the topmost level. Um, even in R&D, uh, there's a 150 percent weighted tax deduction, which is allowed by the government of India for any company uh, which is looking to uh, set up operations in the space of research and development. Um, other few, a few key initiatives which are taken by the government of India um, are uh, the two recent schemes which have been launched. One is the Bulldrug Drugs Parks scheme and the other one being the Production Linked Incentive Scheme. Now, I will speak about these schemes a little bit more in uh, detail at the later stage as well. Um, the other ones being uh, the assistance which is provided by the government of India uh, for having technological upgradation uh, that also caters to a lot of the SMEs in India. Uh, there's also assistance for cluster development which is provided for clusters which are coming up in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, the other key gu uh, guidelines and the policies uh, which make the sector conducive in the country, of course, a very, uh, a very uh, liberal uh, pricing policy as well as the uh, IPR intellectual property po uh, policy which the government has in place right now. Uh, we have uh, a policy for developing the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, better known as NIPERS, out of which seven are already operational in India and more and more are coming up. Um, the Ayushman Bharat scheme, uh, which is one of the largest healthcare schemes in the world to offer affordable healthcare services to the population of India, which of course creates more demand for uh, such kind of mes uh, medicines in India currently. Uh, the Pradhan Mantri Jan Aushadi Pariyojana, which basically offers um, affordable medicines to the uh, greater population uh, in the current uh, in the cu country right now through dedicated shops and uh, also the new drugs and clinical trials rule which were uh, which were drafted and notified in march 2019 which is last year which also eases out the timelines for new drug developments in the current uh, in the country um, this, uh, now I would like to cover the production linked incentive scheme, which is the uh, latest and the uh, most conducive uh, policy launched by the government of India um, in July this year. The policy itself, uh, is for approximately uh, USD 900 million or uh, 6,940 uh, 6, rupees. So this scheme is basically aimed to promote the manufacturing of active pharmaceutical ingredients in the country uh, in the country right now, so that the country can have a reduced dependence on imports from other countries, specifically for 41 products which have been identified for the government of India. These do cover a lot of antibiotics um, and uh, vitamins uh, for which APIs were as well imported by the uh, country. So this scheme basically offers. Uh, incentives on an incremental sales basis for year over year, um, starting from 20% for the first few initial years and then eventually going down to 5%. Um, it covers 41 products, which uh, delves down to 53 uh, key starting materials or APIs. This uh, scheme is also linked to the minimum investment which an investor might be making uh, in their new investment in the country. And of course, it's uh, only applicable currently for um, any greenfield or new investment which a manufacturer is making into the country. Um, the other scheme being the promotion of Baldrak Parks. So the government of India has come out with a scheme to set up three big bulk drug focused parks uh, across the country. Uh, the states haven't been decided yet. Uh, they are being decided basis a uh, challenge method which uh, the Department of Pharmaceuticals is, is undergoing. Different states would uh, uh, submit their proposals uh, to the department and basis different parameters, uh, they will be uh, deciding which states will get the uh, bulk drug cluster parks. Um, but the main um, uh, the main uh, highlights of these parks being that each park will get 
maximum up to 100 crores by the government of India. And it, it's valid for the coming uh, five years. And more than that, the infrastructure which these Balra parks will have will be the state of the art infrastructure with all the uh, ancillary uh, infrastructure which is required, such as the CETP plants, the captive power plants, um, the ancillary infrastructure such as roads, uh, access to the ports, logistical facilities, everything will be covered under these parks, which will, of course, lead to a much higher development and reduction of these API parks in India. Um, the map here just, you know, briefly shows uh, the various clusters which are currently present in India. And not just the manufacturing clusters, we've also tried to map out uh, the different uh, educational institutions which are present in each of the states. So that, um, you know, of course, uh, for manufacturing, you do require uh, the most uh, educated uh, people to come and work for you. So that gets mapped to the clusters which are present uh, right from the north zone, uh, starting from the state of Himachal Pradesh, um, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, um, going down to the south, such as Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, even Maharashtra on the left. So these are the main uh, clusters which are currently present in India. And of course, within these states also, there are more new and new clusters which are uh, coming up for the uh, manufacturing of pharmaceutical industries. Um, I won't take much of the moment here, um, you know, but we do wanted to highlight some of the key investments uh, which uh, major UA players have made into the pharmaceutical industries um, in uh, India um, in the past. So uh, the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority has uh, invested uh, historically into some top uh, Indian pharmaceutical industries such as Alchem Lab, Sun Pharmaceuticals, Aeris Life Sciences. Um, even uh, Jubilant Life Sciences uh, saw uh, a good investment mark uh, coming from C Samina Capital. So um, the table here just lays out a few of the investments, uh, but I I won't really go into much details here. I would also like to uh, talk about the India Investment Grid. Now, India Investment Grid um, is uh, one of the latest initiatives by the government of India, which is being housed under Invest India. It is a grid of all the investable projects across all the sectors which are currently uh, there in India. Uh, in, and a in potential investor who would like to see which are the investable projects in India can very quickly log on to the portal um, and uh, sort the investments by the amounts or by the uh, geography they're located in India and even by the sectors. Um, also, the National Infrastructure Pipeline, which was very recently launched by our Honorable Finance Minister, is also listed on the India Investment Grid. Um, from the India Investment Grid, uh, we just wanted to highlight uh, a few of the opportunities in the Greenfield area, which are already there. Um, I would be more than happy to um, you know, answer to any queries or uh, any particular investments which uh, anybody of you would like to uh, go through later on. These are some of the brownfield uh, investments of the stressed assets, which we have listed on the uh, in India Investment Grid. That's all from my side. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Sakshi, for a very insightful bird eye view of Indian pharma industry. And uh, I think it does give a fair sense of the size and the kind of potential that exists. And also, very importantly, what Government of India is doing to encourage, uh, you know, growth as well as investment into Indian pharmaceutical So thank you for that. Um, as uh, His Excellency also mentioned an commentary around India being the sort of, you know, pharmacy of the world, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Uday Bhaskar uh, from Pharmaxil, uh, who has been, uh, you know, I think he Apex board which has been promoting uh, exports and India in true sense has been able to re really leverage its sort of you know strength in manufacturing because of organizations like Alexa. So over to you, uh, uh, you know, Uday, please to, you know, let us have your perspective on what you think about this corridor as an attractive opportunity. Uh, th <clears throat> thank you, Smriti. And uh, His Excellency, Dr. Aman Bhuri, uh, the CG of India, and uh, His Excellency, Marwan Abdul Ajizji and uh, other esteemed speakers. Our CG has uh, clearly set a contest that, you know, he is very crisp and uh, he's also cautioned uh, the speakers and the panelists to be very crisp. And very crisp. So, um, Sakshi made, Sakshi made my job as well as uh, the job of Mr. Ishwar Reddy very simple. 
uh, Sakshi presented all the statistics and the capabilities of Indian pharmaceutical industry and where we are uh, working and even she mentioned about the recent uh, the government of India policy on APIs also. Just I would like to touch upon very, very, very few points and I try to confine myself to, to the MENA region as well as our collaboration and how we are working with UAE and uh, what is our global presence. As, as uh, Sakshi has really mentioned that, you know, India in the financial year 20 have exported 20.5 billion uh, US dollars worth of drugs to the world with a 7.58% positive growth year on year. It clearly, it, it, uh, it, Indian capabilities again and again demonstrated, uh, even in toughest uh, times. If you see the, if you see the um, exports, particularly from uh, April to September, so we, we recorded almost 14.85% positive growth. So the, in, the, in the entire world, the manufacturing sector is not performing well. But uh, the pharmacy, and uh, I'm very much thankful to Mr. Varwan, Marwanji, uh, we always uh, claim that pharmacy of the world, but I'm very happy to hear from him that, you know, India is a pharmacy of the world. I'm very much thankful to His Excellency, Mr. Mr. Marwan. So uh, our exports, uh, particularly in the, in the, in the past uh, six months of this current financial year, uh, particularly to the Middle East, we 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 exported almost six thirty five point nine two million USD worth of drugs with a growth rate of twenty one point one eight percent. It is it's a very positive growth. Particularly if you see if you see the the time and the economy and uh, the logistic issues and there are so many people are also get disturbed and uh, they they are not going to the doctors other than um, other than. Uh, the COVID uh, connected elements. During this time, you know, we recorded 21.18% growth, particularly in Middle East, is, uh, we, it, uh, it, uh, we, we, everyone has to appreciate the, the Indian pharmaceutical industry and government of India in making this a reality. Our, our uh, exports and our market, and uh, if you see UAE, UAE traditionally, they, they are into uh, the branded, uh, generics are the branded medicines and it is it is rated as one of the costliest markets after US and Germany so in in that scenario you know particularly the entire uh, world economy is going down and GDP also going down and there is a there is a serious financial crisis are going to be there in the coming few years also it may it may, it may continue to grow at this point of time uh, the Indian drugs which are uh, Ca capable of uh, giving efficacious uh, efficacious medicines at affordable price and if you see the indian pharmaceutical industry capabilities also so out of uh, 20 global generic companies eight indian companies are in the in the top uh, 20 and uh, indian pharmaceutical companies are no more uh, you can call them as a uh, national players they are global players and uh, they are out of uh, 20.58 billion more than 50 percent were exporting to uh, highly regulated uh, regulated markets uh, so and if you see our accreditations also uh, we are high uh, usfda approved plants uh, outside yes so we have highest number ugmp plants and at, at this point of time if you see our uh, exports to particularly to uae it's very it's very interesting uh, in financial year uh, 18 we recorded 215 percent positive growth of course, in financial year 1920, there was a slight uh, uh, decline in the exports. But again, if you see in the financial year uh, 20, so we already, uh, from April to September, we recorded 64.19% positive growth only next to Mexico. So this is, this is very, very encouraging. And this is the point where the, the, the UAE and Indian pharmaceutical industry can work uh, very closely, and uh, and uh, the kind of a, uh, the thinking process of the Ministry of Health of UAE that you know they also wanted to reduce the healthcare expenses and they wanted to increase the uses of uh, the generic medicines. It's a it's a four billion market. India is the seventh largest exporting destination with four point eight five percent share. 
so this this there is a possibility of indian pharmaceutical industry to grow their uh, exports as well as they can make their presence uae and particularly in dubai and abu dhabi known for uh, uh, indians uh, as far as cricket is concerned and t20 is concerned as well as tourism is concerned as well as the the emirates is concerned everybody love to move and uh, love to touch uh, uae this this is the most advantage uh, to the indian uh, people as well as the indian pharmaceutical industry it's a, it's a, it's a one of the beautiful countries and at the same time they are very proactive and their regulatory mechanism also are very 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 strong so i, I think uh, with this uh, uh, the, the other point is that you know that uh, our friend is from biraskali is going to talk about the vaccines this is the one area where everybody is looking at uh, india as far as the 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 high vo volumes are concerned so indian pharmaceutical industry mankind and dr reddies has the tag with the sputnik of uh, russia and uh, biologically is working with uh, johnson and johnson and bad biotech is working with icmr and jadis kerala is working with so all these uh, candidates almost you know the, they are in the third phase or the second phase so entire uh, serum institute of india is working with oxford so entire world is looking at india as far as the vaccine volumes are concerned and we are capable of doing that we are capable of doing that and uh, we are very strong and who is resourcing almost uh, almost 70% of uh, vaccines from uh, india for the uh, for the uh, immunization program and 90% uh, uh, of the apis uh, um, uh, are also procured by the, uh who uh, pre pre qualified is from uh, india only so with these capabilities i don't think any other country in the world can do better service and better uh, collaboration and better uh, um, working and uh, with the united uh, united arab emirates and uh, and the mina so i think i think uh, i'm very much thankful to our uh, cga for this project and fiki for this uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, event and the pharmaceuticals export promotion council of india is uh, ready to collaborate with you whatever manner you want and with this i i'll uh, conclude and uh, i prefer to listen to my friends and uh, thank you so much so thank you mr udav haskar um, all pertinent points raised uh, you know being the, being the hub and and i think uh, one of the points uh, i think sakshi mentioned earlier from a cost perspective uh, factor i think this is cost perspective i think there's a lot of capability enhancement which has happened india has one of the finest manufacturing capability now uh, in terms of efficiency in terms of processes and digital adoption which are going to be the theme in terms of uh, who is going to really kind of you know take the challenges of growth going forward in terms of region with the great geopolitical shifts happening companies are being very inward uh, you know self sufficiency focused uh, in this new narrative uh, there is going to be a huge role of how digital and adaptive uh, from a technology perspective uh, companies are going to be purely having efficiency uh, being you know the motivating factor across um, let me I, i you know we were scheduled to have um, ishwara ji joining us uh, talking about you know the whole sort of regulatory landscape and on the quality insurance side we are the apex body in india who guarantee quality and efficacy to a patient uh, unfortunately he has still not joined it so i would like to now move on to our industry panel and uh, possibly just before that in order to cover medical devices i'll invite kalika likhi to uh, share her perspective on medical devices and then we will move on to the industry panelist uh, so uh, kalika can you put your mic put his sorry sorry somebody Thank you, Sulika. I share your perspective. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. <clears throat> I'll just take a minute to share my screen.
So uh, is my screen visible? We can see it, Kalik. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to present to you today the opportunity that lies within uh, New India's healthcare and medical devices sector. Um, a big thank you to uh, Council General Dr. Puri, uh, excellencies and distinguished speakers on this panel, as well as members of the audience. So UAE and India have historically shared a very special friendship and partnership, and that also applies to the healthcare sector. Especially in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been offered an unprecedented opportunity to strengthen bilateral cooperation in the pharmaceuticals and medical devices sectors as well. So just to give you an overview of uh, the larger healthcare industry in India, we expect to be a $372 billion market by 2022. And while we have several segments that are very fast growing segments, such as telemedicine, medical tourism, hospitals, my colleague Sakshi just talked about pharmaceuticals and drugs, I would like to highlight here the opportunity that lies within the medical devices sector. Um, what India really hopes to do is to replicate the success that we have had as a pharmacy of the world also in the medical devices sector. So the medical devices sector today in India is uh, the fourth largest medical devices market in Asia already. And it also ranks among the top 20 markets in the world. So within Asia, it is fourth after Japan, China, and South Korea. And we expect that by 2025, we will actually be a $50 billion market um, given the the fast growth rate that we have been experiencing over the past five years, as well as the government of India's heightened attention to this sector, even before the COVID-19 era, but especially now that uh, medical devices, medical equipment have really come to the forefront of um, all international and national level talks as we look to the future and try to um, anticipate the challenges that may come from future pandemics. An important thing to highlight here is the capacity and capability that India has really built up during this pandemic, during this extreme time of stress. So when uh, the medical uh, devices industry at the beginning uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic in India was perhaps not really prepared um, to manufacture ventilators or had a very low capacity to uh, actually make the PPE and uh, N95 masks in-house. But in a span of just three months, we were able to manufacture about 60,000 ventilators. And also, as PM Modi mentioned in um, one of his recent uh, speeches, we have actually become a manufacturer of 200,000 PPEs uh, and N95 masks a day. So that is the kind of immense potential and growth that we have seen within this pandemic. And so it just indicates what we can do even um, in the post-pandemic. Uh, so to give you an overview of the FDI inflows within the healthcare industry, um, put it in context, in 2019, global FDI actually fell by 1%. Um, and what we witnessed in India was that our FDI inflows actually grew by 18%. And this is the kind of growth that we have also seen in the healthcare industry, the kind of investor confidence that we have here. Uh, while India being extremely strong in drugs and pharmaceuticals, most of this FDI has gone to the sector. The medical devices and surgical appliances sector has attracted about 8% of the 25 and half billion uh, FDI inflows that have come into the healthcare industry. And this is what we really want to maximize on uh, going forward. So the government of India has actually implemented several schemes and initiatives to build investor confidence and the capacity of domestic manufacturing and then exports from India in medical devices. So just to highlight to you some of the top investors that have been investing in the Indian healthcare industry and in medical devices, we have the UAE, France, UK, of course the UAE, and also Japan as the top five uh, investors. What has really made India a global destination for uh, not only foreign investment, but also R&D, 
is its status as one of the top research and development uh, destinations in the world. We have more than 1,140 R&D centers of global corporations in India. And this is actually a case in point for healthcare, a case study, where in India, we on an annual basis have more than 900,000 professionals who graduate with science and engineering degrees, and that is the highest number across the globe. Um, so it is no wonder that companies like GE Healthcare, Siemens Health and Years, and Philips Healthcare, just to mention a very small number of them, who have chosen to set up their global R&D facilities in India and are catering to their global um, requirements from here. And uh, in our conversations with them, they have also indicated to us their interest in expanding this presence even during COVID-19. To further strengthen the, uh, the manufacturing capabilities under the Make in India campaign, as well as future capability that we are trying to build to very targeted schemes and measures. So currently in India, we have about uh, six clusters for medical devices, and some of these are indicated on your screen. So uh, in such clusters, we have uh, medical devices parks, which are dedicated to common uh, infrastructure facilities for companies to come set up and plug and play uh, in plug and play models. And of course, the best example of this in India is the Andhra Pradesh MedTech Zone. Uh, we have Dr. Sharma here today to actually speak to that point. But uh, in addition to these existing setups, the government of India has now uh, come out with a scheme to promote uh, the creation of four new medical devices parks, which will actually be competed for by the state. So the funding that the central government will provide will uh, be on a competitive basis to four states uh, with a grant and aid of 100 crores per park um, to build these parks over the next four years and to actually attract a significant amount of investment and kind of build a capability in domestic manufacturing for medical devices. So that is one of the key schemes that uh, we have implemented during COVID-19 in March 2020. Moving forward, I'd also like to highlight the Medical Devices Production Link Incentive Scheme, which, uh, as Sakshi described for pharmaceuticals, is very similar here and is actually targeted at four target segments where India would like to build uh, more of a domestic industry and reduce import dependence to make India more self-reliant. So these four target segments are displayed here on your screen. And what Invest India has actually uh, experienced is that the queries uh, that have come for the investments in the medical devices sector, the manufacturing investment uh, in the medical devices sector have actually been focused on these four target segments now, which was uh, the intent of the government of India when we did this. So uh, we are here offering an incentive of 5% of incremental sales of good manufactured um, in India over the next five years. And um, we expect to have 20, 30 large players um, who will become uh, major domestic manufacturers and exporters of these devices from India. So um, this also speaks to the point of kind of building on the capacity uh, and momentum that we have created for innovation in this sector during COVID-19 and to actually take that forward with us over the upcoming years. Um, so Invest India as such is working uh, within the medical devices industry right now with about 60 companies that uh, come from all over the globe in their uh, India investment plans and their India expansion plans. And we really look forward to doing this with any companies that are interested uh, in kind of exploring this scheme and the incentives that ac exist across the board within this sector, um, we would be really like to work with them and invite them to come to invest in India. Just to the uh, recent developments in the very special India-UAE partnership, um, there are of course new areas of collaboration emerging within the a larger healthcare industry between our two countries, but I think it's most important to highlight the collaboration that we have already had within the COVID-19 era, which has actually been crucial for both countries uh, in combating the pandemic. Um, so the UAE has actually sent 
to India uh, during this time over seven metric tons of uh, medical uh, equipment and um, supplies. And India, of course, has also helped the UAE with medical professionals, um, with uh, drugs, uh, hydro hydroxychloroquine. Um, and this is something we want to uh, build on now in the upcoming years. Um, in the recent years, uh, we have seen several key investments that have also come from the UAE. And uh, this also includes uh, MOUs. And so just to give you an example, in 2019, we had uh, Apollo Hospitals Hospital Group actually sign an MOU with the Dubai Health Party for greater collaboration in the field of healthcare and health technology. And then in 2019, Gulf Islamic uh, investments have made uh, a commitment to invest several yeah, billion dollars in plan. Shit. Sure. Leave meeting with So, with that, I would like to thank you and uh, invite you to reach out to us at Medical Devices at Investing in Progress. We would be really happy to work with you on your investment plans and journey. Thank you, Kalika. Uh, we had a bit of a disturbance uh, with another participant possibly joining. Thank you, Kalika. I think that was again very useful information on the med devices space. Uh, I'll quickly move on to the last few panelists we have got. Here. Uh, we've got Mr. Mehtan Saksena from Sikha. Mr. Smriti, uh, if, I may, if I may just. Uh, Sorry, there is a lot of disturbance. If I would just request, can I share my thoughts? Because I have a radiation installation which needs me uh, in a few minutes. Is that okay? Sure, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. I, I think there is uh, some some Asad, uh, uh, one Mr. Asad, whose, whose mic is perhaps on. So. Yeah, so uh, thank you um, to my colleague Kalika and apologies that I have to rush because uh, this is something to do with radiation which is not in our hands. We have to be there uh, to follow up the process and that I'm snatching few moments. Um, as our colleague uh, Kalika ji mentioned, uh, um, the first medical technology zone globally, uh, MTs with out of Really, the lot of investments on medicines. It is so interesting that like articles, the investments on medicines of a different nature. In the medical devices space, do an investment, you need two things. One, access to knowledge, more than access to money. Access to knowledge. Because we all know that there are only four companies in the world today that make an MRI. So if funding was enough to make an MRI, there would have been 40 today, like drugs, like pharmaceuticals. Why is it that there are only four people in MRI? Why is it that despite cancer there all over the world, there are 34 countries in the world that don't have a single linear accelerator installed in their countries? Uh, which is made by only two companies in the world. For cancer, you need radiotherapy. For radiotherapy, you need a linear accelerator. But linear accelerator is made by only two companies in the world. Robotic cardiac surgery system made by only two companies in the world. And therefore, my point is, medical devices is highly knowledge specific. Just like in a chemical compound, there are few molecules that go in. In a medical device, anywhere between 200 to 2000 components that go in each component having its own intellectual property patents circuit diagrams and so on and therefore assimilation of that knowledge becomes the gateway to investment anyone anyone who has that knowledge can seek investments and an investor can put money only on those companies that have that knowledge unique requirement of investment and joint partnership in medical devices is access to high-end technical facilities. For example, right from a thermo to a ventilator, 
from a CT scan to an MRI, you would need an electromagnetic interference chamber to test your machine. And these chambers run under the operations of internationally notified body. There are very few in the world. Company or investor that the product can go up to the mark can get as per the feeling to invest on that company. And the will be will be if there is an access to such facilities. So medical devices require 18 such industrial facilities, right from laser to radiation safety to EMI, EMC, gamma irradiation, and so on. And therefore, knowledge of technology and access to product validation, industrial facilities that are scientific in nature are two requirements in medical devices field that precedes investment. They attract investment. Now, that's exactly what we did at AMTZ. We built the first campus in the world, which has all the 18 facilities in one single campus. So we are a city of about eight kilometers, established as a medical technology city, known as AMTZ. This is the only campus in the world, which has all the 18 scientific facilities required by investors and industry that deal with medical devices. The next best is in China with 11 facilities, and the next best is in Philadelphia with seven or eight facilities. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that when you provide all these scientific facilities in one place, you reduce the necessity of xyloed investment by manufacturers. They can come with the production machinery, with bare minimum investment, and still have best of world-class production because the common facilities that are industrial and scientific in nature supports their production. And that's what we did. Now, what is it that UAE and AMTZ in India can do together? Because traditionally, both UAE and India do not have a, a, a history of technological uh, a might in medical devices. None of these countries actually have large number of patents in this sector. So what is it that we can do together? And there are four things that we can do together in which two are already there, which was shared by my co my colleague, Ms. Kalika. And there are two. Mr. Madhavan Kutti, can you mute your mic? Yeah, thank you. So the two things that we can do together is government of India, besides bringing out the proposal to set up four more metech zones on the lines of AMTZ, has also brought out a production linked incentive scheme. In fact, the reason I was in this meeting is CEO Niti Ayog was, who is the chairman of the Empowered Group, was doing a review of the scheme, making it more attractive for investors. Now, production linked incentive scheme for medical devices in India provides for a 5% sale based annual incentive by the central government to the manufacturers. So anybody who comes in now to invest and work in the field of medical devices in India, if they produce a hundred dollar worth of machinery from their facility, would get five dollars paid by the federal government of India annually for five years, which really changes the entire uh, entire feasibility of a medical technology business in the country. Now, this production-linked incentive scheme obviously require access to technology and access to scientific infrastructure which, infrastructure, which we have built in the zone at AMTZ, but also requires access to capital. So this is the time for entities in UAE to take advantage of a growing business in India, which is growing at the rate of 17% CAGR in medical devices take advantage of the production linked incentive scheme, which is being given directly by government of India, take advantage of the scientific infrastructure that has been built for medical technology and co-invest joint ventures. So that the technology risk is minimized, financial risk is minimized and gains are maximized. One, the second thing that UAE and India can do together in the field of medical devices 
is we are now setting up a thousand crore medtech venture fund and this thousand crore medtech venture fund targets only medical devices manufacturers and entrepreneurs because see what has happened in the world is while in universities there are large number of enterprises doing small small things there are multinationals like ge's and siemens's and philips out there in medical devices globally there is a huge number of middle class of entrepreneurs this middle class of entrepreneurs range anywhere between 25 crore and 200 crore turnover companies these companies have technology but needs access to funding which is from non debt non banking institution these middle class we call them are happy if a, a somebody takes an equity partnership in their company because they have the potential but does not have partnership now given that india and uae do not have a legacy of medical device patents intellectual properties or production given that uae has some of the very advanced mechanisms of raising capital given that india has brought in the production linked incentive scheme and medtech zones we are the lead leaders in in having and setting up others in the country what we can do together with our friends and colleagues in UAE are these two gigantic things that can transform medical technology economy and market globally. One, we can bring in at least 20 joint venture partners from UAE who are happy to invest in India established companies in medical devices to further their business without technology risk. Because technology risk remains with the Indian enterprises. And the financial risk can be can be mellowed because the PLI scheme is there getting benefit. And these joint ventures can create 20 leaders of tech in the next two years, taking advantage of both countries and the best of the both countries. And the second thing we can do together is in thousand crore medtech fund, we can bring in participation from funders from the UAE who are happy to take uh, the equity through the medtech fund and gets the get the best returns on their money because we are growing at a market of 17 percent CAGR and because the technology domain has been harnessed in India by the medtech companies in the zone and if we are able to make partnership of joint ventures partnership of UAE uh, uh, financial institutions in medtech and health tech in the medtech fund of India, I think we will be able to create at least 25 to 50 champion partnerships between two countries, which will, which will be a hallmark both of business and diplomatic relationships we share. And also, we'll be able to catapult at least 10,000 crore of production market in medical devices in next two to three years, taking advantage of the central government schemes and established government-owned zones like the medtech zone. And therefore, since my esteemed colleagues, the consul general, the, 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 the call, uh, senior colleagues from FIKI, our friends from UAE are there, I simply wanted to tell that the time is right to quickly identify beyond the conferences and webinars partnerships that can change the medical devices sector. And all we need with all your joint support is 20 people to walk in, 20 people to come up. We would bring 20 people who own the technology and are parties of business to create those partnerships on ground. As you all take further steps, if there is anything that we can do as Zone and as Niti Aayog's team and in the technology domain of medical devices in India, we would go all out to ensure that these UAE and 20 partners from India really forge 20 partners in very meaningful investment in medical devices, not just for India and UAE, but thank you, Jai Hind, and over to you. So thank you, Dr. Sharma. I think we sort of summed up the whole med devices opportunity really well. Uh, 
Quickly moving on to the industry representation we have on the call, we have uh, we have pretty much uh, you know three verticals covered by uh, you know um, Nishan Saxena Sipla. Basically, he looks at the you know international market. He is the CEO for international market. Sipla is, as you are well aware, it's it's one of the 15 top generic company in the world. Uh, and and earlier the uh, you know note. Uh, sort of referred to India being the, you know, at the forefront of HIV uh, remediation. I think CIPLA is to kind of, you know, credit with that. Uh, they have been, they've been doing manufacturing in India for, for about 85 years. This is the 85th year. Uh, I can go on and on about, you know, CIPLA's contribution to Indian pharma industry and globally. So we have Nishant representing CIPLA. We'll, we'll just hear his perspective in a minute. I just want to introduce the other two uh, panelists we have. We have Dr. Vikram Paratkar. I think there cannot be a better time to discuss vaccine. He comes from uh, biological E. Uh, I think the whole world is looking at uh, vaccine as the big, big sort of, you know, breakthrough to come in. And I think, uh, you know, Vikram will give us a uh, perspective on, um, you know, from an operations perspective, he leads the operation at biological E. We would have some really insightful, uh, you know, comments coming in from him. And then we have Dr. Jitender Sharma, who is again uh, representing Net Devices. Uh, I do not uh, right now see him on the panel, but uh, hopefully he will join by the time we get to. So without uh, further ado, I would want to sort of, you know, go first to Nishan to get his perspective on what are the opportunities and challenges uh, he sees from an Indian Pharma leading manufacturer perspective. And also, if he could comment on some of the learnings he has had, uh, you know, from a North African market, from the MENA region, uh, which uh, has very well covered in the past, what are the learnings we can share on this forum, which could be useful from a future collaboration perspective? So, Nishant, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a line about Sipla and then UAE, uh, you're an 8 billion market cap, 25,000 employee company. We are also, uh, in my region, the international market outside US, uh, we are also the number one, whether it's emerging markets, whether it's Middle East, North Africa, whether it's uh, whether it's Africa completely, on all the Indian exports, we will be the number one. My own team sells to 80 different countries in Europe, Latin America, Middle East, Africa, Australia, China, etc. And we have chosen to make uh, UAE our head office and I'm based in Dubai. We partnered with governments across the globe, whether it's uh, US military who wants uh, high quality drugs at affordable price, or whether it's Germany respiratory, whether it's Morocco who wants a recipe factory localized, whether it's Algeria who would want uh, oncology, whether it's Thailand and so on. So, so in many of the South Africa HIV, in many of these, we are partnered with the governments and we say, tell us what are your problem statements? Where would you want to have a lower uh, call it a lower uh, price product at the same quality and FDA picks a proof factory we will uh, and uh, His Excellency I was just chatting with him uh, Marvan Janai has been to our uh, has been to our Goa factory and of course uh, we are uh, we are proud tenants of the Dubai Science Park that he espouses. Uh, UAE is an excellent location so thank you uh, to everyone who has made that happen. Uh, it's very, very corporate friendly. It's very developed. Uh, it's a travel center, though after COVID, it's becoming a little bit of a, a, a I mean, we don't really need to travel as much. But uh, one of the reasons I relocated here with my family was that the easiest place to, to run a multi-country business was UAE. But also proximity to India. And by that, I just don't mean the physical proximity, which is there, or the demographic uh, people mobility. But also cultural, we are all foodies, very similar food. Uh, we, uh, we have many, many common interests. Uh, the leapfrogging that we are trying to do on the global stage, the tolerance, many, many cultural similarities. So uh, UA is a great destination. Specifically, my request, and I have uh, mentioned that to Marwan before as well, uh, uh, one big thing that can open up, uh, and uh, Dr. Puri is also here, if he can help, uh, uh, one big thing that is holding Indian pharma companies back from UAE specifically. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Not, I will not utilize this. Dr. Asad, there is a. Uh, can you please put. 
Dr. Asad Muid, you. I'll just. Yeah, it's done. Uh, we have uh, we have this strange thing in UA called the concrete of origin pricing, which basically means that if uh, all most of our factories are in India, that if I export anything to from India, I end up getting the same pricing as I have in India. And this is very different to what it is in a Europe, what it is in a US. So what it means is that there are drugs I make in US approved FDA uh, plants in India, and I sell it in US at, uh, at $20. Now, India, I make the same drug, but from a very different factory. Maybe I sell it at five, $6. India, as you know, has the lowest pricing of pharmaceutical drugs across the world. It's a very poor country and all of that stuff. But in UA, if I want to sell, even from my FDA uh, approved plant, I will have to sell it at the same $6. And uh, that just does not make sense because uh, if you look at the history of the pharma, Indian pharma companies in UAE, most of them have chosen to go back in UAE. You may still use UAE as a center for the rest of Middle East as a gateway for that, that is fine. But whether it was a Lupin, whether it was Sun, very little presence in UAE, primarily because of this and where, and in some cases, it ends up having hilarious outcome. Like for example, a specific example I gave my one last time is a butacinide respiratory very important as the madrag. There is only the originator today is selling it at uh, $40. The country desperately needs one generic to reduce the price of, uh, of uh, to the patients. And the pricing that we have been given uh, is $6 because that's the $6 price in India. And I cannot, I cannot, I mean, I have a approval, but I cannot manufacture it in an FDA plant at $6 and I end up not utilizing my uh, uh, my uh, marketing authorization. And I keep going around saying that, look, currently the patients are paying $40. The price across all the markets, whether it's in LG or any, any, uh, any corridor you want to take, Europe, US, it's $20, $25. Why would you give $6? Just because $6 is the price in India. But that's a factory in India that uses it. So, uh, so that is my point. I think that is one area where, uh, 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 and, and in principle, His Excellency agreed with me as well. But uh, Dr. Puri, I would request if you could also help us there. Uh, we we can. I mean, we can solve problems if you if you tell us these are the five drugs where you need to reduce your pricing by 30, 40 percent. We can do it. I mean, COVID drug Remdesivir, for example. In US and Europe, the originator sells it for $300. From FDA and uh, EU and Australia approved factories, V and other generics sell it for $30. That is 10%. Now I understand there will be a top 5% of the population that would always want the originator, and that's fine. Everyone should have a choice. But there will be a lot of people that we can help. And the last piece I would say is the faster registration of. Uh, you pick and choose the, the medicines which are important for the country. You can choose these 10 medications. Uh, it has to be a US approved and, and many countries are doing it. Just now in Mexico, there is a tender by UN Ops where they said these 20 products are very critical for Mexico. And there they said, you don't need to be registered in Mexico because that's a five year process, but only for these drugs that the country needs. And the condition on the industry is that we need to give them at least a 30 to 40 percent lower price versus their current pricing in which they are buying. And that can be huge. Like, for example, just a HIV drug, a TEE, which is the predominant HIV drug. Today, uh, Mexico was spending $100 million on just that one drug tender, and we've been able to reduce it to $60 million, same number of dosages. So we can help if we know that uh, these are the areas where, uh, where help is needed. Just the last part, since Smriti had asked this, uh, what is uh, the difference doing business here? Uh, it's almost philosophical. I think at one level, people are the same everywhere. Uh, and, I, uh, and on the other, uh, at another level, if you compare it with the business that you do in uh, Europe, I mean, I have businesses in Germany, and when I go and talk to Germany and the people there, it's, a, it's an established process, and I think, it's process oriented much more than uh, people relationship oriented. On the other hand, I do very extensive business in, in Yemen, in Iran, in Iraq, uh, 
in Lebanon, uh, in Algeria and Morocco. And there it's a lot about first trusting each other, uh, having, I mean, the, the, our partners have been to dinner at my house, we have been to dinner at their house. It's, it's first developing that trust with each other. Many of these, including the UAE relationship with the NTD guys, it is a 19 year old relationship. There is a lot of trust that is built in and then you start uh, uh, talking business. So there are its similarities and, uh, and differences. All in all, this region is very, very exciting. I mean, just this quarter, I was telling people we grew 20% in this region. It's a, it's a high growth region. And I think uh, for many, many years, because of the instability in the region, the Middle East region, uh, the lower rung company where pricing was okay, but the quality was questionable, had a field day. Now, as, as, the, and the, as the region is becoming stable, uh, uh, higher run companies with still affordable price, but good quality products, uh, approved products across the world can have a very high growth. So that, uh, no, absolutely, absolutely points, uh, you know, across the price caps and the, and the, and the sort of, you know, regions sort of attractiveness, the growth potential, all of that well noted, Dishanta. I would want to sort of, you know, now ask the same question to uh, uh, Vikram Paratkar, uh, you know, his perspective on the whole India UAE collaboration. Also, where does he see the opportunity for, uh, you know, a manufacturer? Uh, and, and also from the current challenge in terms of, you know, vaccine distribution, the logistics, uh, given that he leads the operations of biological e any perspective you can share with us, uh, Dr. Vikram, please. Over to you. Yeah, so uh, India has a very uh, uh, established uh, history of supplying vaccines globally. And uh, we have always come uh, uh, to the rescue of pandemics globally. And I'm sure we'll do the same uh, uh, this time around as well. Uh, well you know, the, the reason polio got eradicated in the world uh, had a lot of uh, contribution from Indian companies that supplied the oral polio vaccines for the world. And now we'll be doing the same for COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, we are gearing up to supply more than a billion doses of vaccine, both to India and to the rest of the world. Uh, in terms of uh, partnership with UAE, I think, uh, uh, you know, we see a lot of uh, new vaccines that are developed in India will be entering into UAE uh, in the near future because India is now developing global vaccines. Uh, uh, most of Indian companies are uh, developing vaccines to global standards and getting uh, WHO pre-qualification for uh, almost all our vaccines under development and would be very happy to, uh, uh, you know, work with UAE and the MENA region to understand the vaccines uh, that are in need for that population and whether we can uh, either develop our vaccines to your requirement because sometimes some vaccines uh, are developed to some specific regions as well. So we'll be more than happy to look into that. Uh, uh, COVID is going to be the first global vaccine, I think, uh, because, uh, you know, at the same time, everybody in the world is wa wanting it. So this is going to be a challenge as well as a great opportunity for Indian companies. And we also welcome uh, uh, UAE investment into our companies to expand our manufacturing capacities. Uh, we can have dedicated capacities potentially for your markets as well. And uh, some new business opportunities are being uh, explored uh, in the COVID pandemic, which were not uh, explored earlier. And so uh, it's going to be very exciting from that perspective as well. And uh, in terms of uh, going forward, uh, you know, Indian companies are definitely rising to the challenge and would be more than happy to uh, uh, supply the vaccines as required by all your population. Thank you. No, thank you, Dr. Vikram. I think uh, we are uh, well beyond the top of the hour. We are quarter and, and, and an hour over, and I think it's time to sort of summarize because the next session begins. I think we had some really excellent uh, reaffirmation on the opportunity itself by Dr. Raman Puri as well as uh, His Excellency Amar Banjanahi. I think the idea will be to sort of, you know, focus down on some of the specifics which has emerged from this discussion 
try and see where uh, a government intervention both sides could help augment this whole uh, uh, you know opportunity uh, which exists and how do we build on the kind of likely demand growth which is you know which is going to be coming in in the ua region as well as the india competitiveness extending on from barely cost to now capability and digital and technology and clearly going on to more complex generic speciality pharma as well as the nb space nc space a uh, very innovation led growth in indian pharma so thank you very much uh, uh, you know everyone on this call the panelists uh, you know invest india colleagues uh, dr puri uh, his excellencies and piki uh, you know pravin ji and swati uh, it has been a honor really to be part of this discussion and uh, wish you all the very best thank you very much